For many years now, Russ and Craig have had many wide-ranging conversations with folks from all over the gaming world. This is one of those conversations. D6G, the lost chapter. No, so seriously, it was like this combination of political people, all mostly bearded, coming in one direction. Right. And the gamers in the other. It was really, it was really. And you forgot the band, too. And look, it's Rafe. Hey, Rafe. Rafe. In Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, were you just sitting in that booth the whole time? Well, no, I just came in. I got to get my chocolate color, sometimes known as the chocolate stick. Ah, yes, indeed. Well. Well, when you get that, come on over. So, yes, as Rafe said, there's a band also. So it was a very intriguing gaming uh, space to be experiencing. I'm Millie's hugging was. you right now, Craig, by the way, because I haven't seen you in so long. Mm, and I'm cringing because you I've cringing, got this yes. big personal personal space <laughs> issue. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for that little role-playing piece. Anyway, so uh, we've, of course, been dealing with a, a, a change of gaming venue in our gaming group over the past few months. And um, I'm a little bit torn very, on that, by the way. Yeah, and I think this is going to be the venue for us to talk that out. Good. Yeah, I, I so. think this uh, – I'm sensing a couple weeks of therapy for Rafe through the D6 generation. That's what I'm sensing. <laughs> okay. We'll start here, and I think That's we'll what even we're here move for, into Rafe. the main show. I remember we started this podcast. It was how can we help Rafe – you know, how That's can we true. be a more affordable source of therapy for, mm-hmm. for you? <laughs> exactly. I mean, exactly. you can't really argue with, with, with $2 an episode, yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> really, uh, f- compared to the price of an actual psychologist. You know, it's exactly. pretty, pretty, pretty short right. money, really. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, a few months or a month or two ago, a longtime listener, Shannon White, emailed us and w- asked us uh, what we thought about gamer gamer cafes because she's getting one in her new Ooh. are in her hometown. Yeah. Her name is Shannon White. And I've kept that email up and I haven't like I had didn't I I emailed her back and I was like that sounds like interesting. I'm kind of interested to talk about that, look into that cuz you know, I don't know a lot about it. Um and then uh Casual Game Insider magazine came mm-hmm. out with their fall 2015 issue and there's a giant gamer cafe article in there. And then we had our big change of venue hit uh, a couple snags and we were talking about that and it all kind of culminated into this is what we're talking about in Dunkin Donuts tonight. Nice. <laughs> there you have so, it. So we're going to start talking about gamer cafes cuz I think Russ may well have started that trend I'll, I I although you know there's no scientific evidence to that fact <laughs> and then and then or move into all. where we are and 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 help Rafe with his little problem. Yep. But uh, my first glimpse of gamer cafes was on Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. Uh a few years ago I remember seeing it going like seriously somebody's trying to kickstart a restaurant that's weird. Uh, and I didn't think too much of it. And then every now and then you hear about, oh, there's a gamer cafe. And you're like, what is a gamer cafe? So once we decided we were going to talk about that tonight, I was like, well, let me go back to Kickstarter where it all started for me and, and look it up. And a quick search for gamer cafe on Kickstarter shows you a little more than 60 projects that have been done uh, in the history of Kickstarter. Wow. 60? 60. 20. No, 25 of them. And and I'm sure a few uh, results snuck in that aren't really gamer cafes. Uh, but I just I was just doing quick math. So 25 of them were successful. All right. Okay. 38 of them were not successful. Okay. So it's less than a 50-50 chance to try to start your uh, gamer cafe. And now when you say successful, you just mean they funded. We don't they know. They funded. Yeah, that's true. In fact, we don't know I know if they actually several, launched or were yep, or still and alive I know today. Sev- I know of at least one that actually closed. So mm-hmm. you're absolutely right. That's 25 that funded. Who knows where they are in the process right. of starting now. So and that's so less than 50% fund. You've got to figure fewer than that actually launch and then if Normal small business rules are any indication, Russ. What is it? Less than less than half survive the first five years, or is it less? Well, is, is it worse? Like than something that? like eighty percent fail in the first year. Yeah, yes. that's uh, that, the they, yeah. I yeah, remember. The, I remember. And Russ learned all this when he started. Yes, Daca. and then it's like fifty percent of those only make it past five years or something. That's yeah. right. That's right. But, so but it's a large, it's, yeah. uh, most 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 small businesses fail in the first year. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, and so. So that's so that's so yeah. By so the my, way, to follow up on that, um, a lot of people will come to my office as my wearing my hat as the the guy who knows how to deal with debt, and they're like they think that that 
and then and then businesses will succeed or fail within the next year, then third year, four year, five years, right? Yeah. So they make it past five, and they fail in year seven. They're like, but I don't understand. I made it five years. <laughs> like it's not a magic formula. Failure like, is always spending, an option. Spending like a drunken sailor. Right. Well, no. Usually, what happens was they weren't profitable. They just somehow eked it out. <laughs> eked it out. Yeah. That that was their goal. If we make it to five, yes. we'll be okay. No, that's true. That's kind oh, of. I have no doubt. I have no doubt. That's kind of like I can't be out of money. I still have checks in my checkbook. You know, that's yes. kind of that. exactly. <laughs> sort of logic. Wow, you're like summing it up perfectly for uh, me. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, it's a gift and a curse. It's a gift. So, <laughs> so anyway, for so, those of you listening who have no idea what we're talking about, what is a gamer cafe, Russ? When I say gamer cafe, what are you thinking? Well, I think. All right, so so my definition probably doesn't match yours. So, so okay, because when I think gamer I cafe, own. I think of something that has food. Yeah. And a place to play. Uh huh. So, not necessarily a store to buy games, although they probably sell a small selection of games. So yeah. it's not really the same as a gaming store. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm thinking more of it's it's more of a place that that has some foods, probably more in the realms of coffee shop type foods with coffees, yeah. and then I can actually go ahead and play my games there. Uh, it's full of gamers. Um, there were, the reason that definition is in my head is because there were for a long time in the nineties and late eighties video game cafes, yeah. which was this, or internet cafes, right? Which yeah. were the same sort of thing. In fact, ironically, X-Wing, I used to play X-Wing, the video game in one of those cafes. Um, so, so very much to me, it's like light foods, you know, coffees and drinks, and then I can play my games there. And usually sometimes there's a fee to play or sometimes you just got to buy lots of food, <laughs> but yeah. But generally, that's linked in that way. Now, there's been other kinds of hybrids, right. but that's what I think of it when I think about it. Yep. Well, that's very close to the industry standard from what I've been able to gather both from the uh, Casual Game Insider magazine and a few other places that I looked. Uh, most of them are pay-to-play, mm-hmm. and the main reason for that is that traditionally what you expect when you go into an actual gamer cafe with board games is that they're going to have a library on hand. It's mm. not that you're going there to play your games because there's that risk of uh, getting food and drink on the all the components and the games, etc. Spillage. So, so yeah, exactly. <laughs> so most of these places have a big game library as extensive as their space allows. And you're right. They most of these I don't think sell games. They do, however, have a system where you can order them. So they probably have a a partnership with a with a store or something like that. Uh, they offer food and drink, and like you said, it it can vary and everywhere from like light snacks and cooler drinks all the way to more substantial food. But usually, like coffee cakes and things like that. Um, many of them also. Uh, currently, uh, f- they want to focus on a community, so they want to say like we're in Brooklyn and the- we are the cafe in Brooklyn, and they want to like really sort of um, adopt the, the 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 identity of the neighborhood mm-hmm. they're in or the locale and kind of be the go to place sort of and make that part of their mission statement. Uh, and that's those are the basic traits. So you hit most of them, and I think the little hybrid there from the uh, cyber the uh, internet cafes, which I think. There are still some because I think I caught a couple of those in my search. Yep. Um, but uh, to go into just a little bit of history, and this is all according to the Casual Game Insider article written by uh, Matt Thrower. Mm-hmm. Um, the first gamer cafe, he says, was in 2011 in Toronto, Canada. Uh, ben Castani started a, a a small cafe called Snakes and Lattes. Mm-hmm. And Snakes and Lattes had a board game library. It did all of those things. You had to pay to play, but then they had a board game library. Most of these places also have uh, tutors or trainers or instructors that can help you learn all of the games and sort of um, guides to, to help you through, uh, you know, into more elaborate, complex games. Uh, they did try to add a new location that would serve alcohol also that was called Snakes and Loggers. Mm-hmm. I like and it. And that's the first one that I saw that closed. That actually closed just last month in September. And they're planning on something else new that hasn't hit Twitter yet. So I don't know what their next phase is. But so those guys are, they have one good that they've been around since 2011, Snakes and Lattes. And they're starting a new one because Snakes and Loggers didn't do so well. Uh, in 2014, the first Kickstarter, uh, the, the first uh, gamer cafe in London opened uh, called Drafts. 
and that was two guys who were independently trying to figure out how to do a gamer cafe and one guy was really good at websites so he did a website before he did his actual cafe and the other guy found the website and was like hey you're doing a cafe and the guy was like well <laughs> sort of i got a website and they came together and they both started this one place called drafts and they started using kickstarter successfully so that was the first successful kickstarter that i my research and uh matt thrower's article kind of coalesced around that and then he kind of focused on um this this uh new york uh gamer cafe called brooklyn strategist which was actually started by a psychologist who wanted to have a place for families and kids to be able to go and play games, which sounds kind of, oh, kind of kids, da da da. But then you find out that his focus is in deep strategy games <laughs> that he wants these kids to learn. And so, cool. and he's wildly successful so far. So he's really one of these guys who's kind of like making community yeah, that's cool. a, a big deal of, about his thing. And it, and it seems very successful. So, uh, each one of these things, you, you know, each store is going to be slightly different or each cafe is going to be different. It's going to focus on different things depending upon the owner and the community. But basically, you know, they've got they, they're hitting most of these same buttons and um, I got something. They're providing a place to go to play these games. Yes, Rafe. I've had this idea. I'm, I'm not saying it's original. So this is what I envision. I envision when I make my millions, which, by the way, I should tell you guys, um, Maybe that'll happen. So I'm taking my uh, little side product, Rocket Dog Reports, to the mobile uh, app space. Ooh. And I've got my first investor meeting this Monday, recording ooh. investors. And I, out of nine people, I have six RSVPs that are coming to the meeting. Ooh. Wow. So I'm super psyched. I have to raise 175 grand. And um, I'm psyched. People are into it. So, hey, anybody out there? Wow. Those of anybody who wants to, you know, cut a check for twenty five grand, like me, Russ and Craig, can cut a check for fifty bucks. Uh, let me know. Although <laughs> yeah. I may not need you um, after Monday, but keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, right. So anyway, when I make my millions, this is what I envision. I want to make. It's going to have to be in a, in a good sized city, a restaurant, okay, for gamers. And oh, Rafe, that's what we're talking about. I, I know, but it's a little different. So think sports bar. But it's not for sports aficionados, so it's going to have Star Wars on the wall. It's going to have Lords of the Rings on the wall, kind of like the Ram in uh, Indianapolis when we go there, so sort of like that. But yeah. properly lit for gaming, with properly heighted tables for gaming, both board gaming and not, so the booths will be large enough to play a board game and have some food on the side. And here's the key. It's not a gaming restaurant. The gaming part's not going to make the money. It needs a chef. It needs a cook. They know how to. They need to make a good burger. They need to know how to pour a good beer. The restaurant has to survive on its own as a restaurant. Um, I've watched enough of you know Bar Rescue to see that. So, and then the gaming space, the the model I would use is not free. You're not going to upcharge the food. It would be like billiards. So you just rent the table for as long as you want to play your game. I uh-huh. think that would work. What do you guys think? Uh, I think that geek. Sheik is trying to do that to you. They're, oh, yeah, they just, by the they way. Just, steal the idea, go out there and do it, make, make it happen. We need tons of these. Well, there's yeah, already... I don't, I don't know that there... I, how many gamers are... Well, the, well this, this isn't your n- the problem with your thing. The problem with... My problem with the Geek Sheik thing is that they want to tie fine dining in with gaming, which I don't know... Uh, I don't know a lot of gamers who are going to put fine dining money down on the table no. for fine dining while they game. Yeah, my model uh, is a sports bar, but for gamers. Yeah, I think those... I think, Rafe, there are a few of those. So... Okay. There's a great place, if you've never been... I'm going to Google it. Um... Flying Saucer Pizza Company in Salem, Massachusetts. Oh, I've been there. Is fantastic. I love that. It is fantastic. Games there. Fantastic pizza. It is totally nerded out. So there's like a full size statue of Lucius of Borg when you go in there. So it's so it's a it's a it's a sports bar for nerds. Um, But in the corner, so it's gaming is not its primary thing. But there is a good selection of board games, including some very very hard to find classic Star Trek board games, which are pretty funny. Um, And you can play them there. But it's not. You're right. The the gaming is not the primary thing. And there was a similar place in uh, Vancouver that Tara sent me to uh, Canada that was also a very geek and gamery focused bar, tavern, pub type thing. but again, not so much gaming, but definitely geek centered. So I think if you're thinking of a, 
you know, if you wanted a bar that felt like Dungeons and Dragons, th- those kinds of things exist. There's also some in yeah, New York that be that artists. Yeah, it would be that too. It would be yeah. So you're thinking bar. like, yeah, so you're thinking like really game, you can play games and it's really designed for game it's, play. It's really a sports bar, but for yeah. gamers. Yeah. So it's not just Red Sox. It's baseball. It's football. Right. So it's all our different things that we like as gamers. Right. So the statute and the big boom movie posters from the 70s yeah, I mean, of Star Wars. Flying and, Saucer's like that, right? Because that's all over the it, world. It is. Um, but Flying Saucer's more like, hey, we're, we're into nerd stuff. Here's a couple board games. Yeah. My restaurant would be designed like billiards to be lit, oh. spaced, and have the right size okay. table to play our games. So there'd be like a gaming section, yep. kind of like the billiard section at a Yep. Got it. Okay. And the eating section, I don't know what the design is, would work where you could have your meal and have your big um, Lords of Waterdeep board table Got out it. there, too, okay. with space. Cool. Okay. Right. Very cool. All right. Now, not quite that grandiose as far as the food goes, but, Russ, do you think that at its heyday when you were you were stocking some food and drinks and stuff – that DACA came close to being almost like a gaming cafe? Well, I think some of the elements you have, we definitely built the store around that. So, well, DACA was always designed to be a, um, I didn't think of it as a sports bar. I thought of it more as like a gym or a bowling alley model (laughs) where you paid to play. We had all the facilities. So imagine you go to your racket club, right, to play racquetball, or you go to your bowling alley to bowl, and there's everything you need to play, but there's also a pro shop where you can buy new rackets or buy new gloves or new shoes or whatever. So that's the way DACA was designed. So very, very strong sense of community, especially since it was based on the DACA DACA website. So that was mm-hmm. obviously a strong sense of community. So the community was there. The pay to play was there. The, um, I guess the tutors slash the, you know, we, we ran the events. So the organization was there. So mm-hmm. that part was happening. We did demos, so that was there as well. Yeah. Um, the only, but we didn't really have food except for, you know, a small selection of candy bars and a soda machine. You had machine. snack cakes. Yeah. I mean, you know, okay. <laughs> snack so, cakes. Now you we had, had hostess snack cakes. I will say this though. So, um, and I, be- I remember a microwave at one it, point. Okay. Yes. <laughs> but, <laughs> but there was a place, um, I do take exception to the fact that the first one of these existed in 2011 because, there was a place run by Troy McCauley called the Rogue's Den. Oh, yeah. And the Rogue's Den was actually down in Connecticut, or was it New Jersey? No, no, Virginia. Virginia. I think it was farther south, it yeah. Was, but it was, it was, and it was, he, he made no bones about it. It was inspired by Dak and Dak because he emailed me all the time, and I met Troy yeah. a couple times. Um, and, um, I think he's still a listener. Oh, yeah. And he, and he, and he, he ran, uh, he had his own podcast for a while, too. Um, yeah. and it was a massive gaming space, but it also had a dedicated, like, cafe. And a uh, dedicated, like, um, clothing store area where they sold, like, geeky shirts and stuff. So it was almost like a full-service, totally gamer, you know, mini mall. Yep. <laughs> now, and now, based on the timing of this, though, what I'm, why, the reason I'm going to think – I think this probably escaped Matt Thrower's uh, um, uh, radar is it was probably miniatures games. It was mostly – yes. Yeah, so these – And the ones so, I, and the, so and the, I think it's totally valid. I think yeah. it – but well, I, I think using his definition, and I think you know most of these board gamers, Russ, you know, they're <laughs> well, ignorant of I the would miniatures. Say the miniature thing mm-hmm. became a thing in the two thousands. So we went from just being retail stores to some kind of place to play because GW introduced the Battle Bunkers. Places yeah. like Daka Daka started, uh, but there wasn't just Daka Daka. There were other places like that across the country that did this, right. and so there was an explosion of miniature gaming, and it kind of predated the real big board game stuff that started happening in 2005 2006 so right so i think so now yes i think it's it's caught up to there but the miniature gaming thing when it was really really huge at least for me i'm sure i mean i know it's huge elsewhere still and there are still these stores exist but i think if you include miniature gaming i think you'll find that they have the because miniature gamers really need that place to play i mean you can put a board game anywhere right right Um, but miniature gamers need that dedicated space so they've they've been fighting this problem for a long time yeah you got some serious like you couldn't throw down uh firefly yeah, that's just, true. On well, just that's, any table. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, table hog. But yeah, I'd, I'd say that that there was – but the, the idea of really getting the food close to the games like that um, yeah. hasn't been done often successfully. That's for right. sure. Yeah, right. Um, and and Myriad tried it for a while. They did. They you did. Know, they didn't yeah. have a kitchen, so what they did was their Myriad meals where they had mm-hmm. uh, they had a couple selections from close by restaurants. And mm-hmm. the, the gamer guides, as uh, Dan used to call them, would actually – call in your order and have it delivered and they would set it all up for you and 
and so you were you were eating where you were gaming, and they had a a, a gaming library, so they kind of basically put it, most of it together. But it wasn't at all sort of like a nice, relaxing ga- uh, dining environment. It was a, right. you were eating in a game store, right? Right. You know, and then uh, uh, local game guy Gordon, of mm-hmm. course, is starting his new uh, hobby store, and he's I want to go check that out. I do too. He's kind of like hitting the edge of that where he's going to have. A selection of you know ready-made foods and stuff yep. like that, and it's pay-to-play. It's again all, all miniatures, so it's more closer to the to a Daka Daka or ro- was it Rogues Den? Did you uh, say it's not all miniatures? So he has he also has dedicated board game tables because. Uh, uh, oh, did you go? I, I have not. Gone I have not I've, been, but I've heard it's but, a very small board game selection. But, but Russ Vickery, who's a friend of the show, also uh, yep. Russ. Um, does a lot of demoing there and he's any he, and i happen to be friends with him on facebook so i see him tweeting pictures and they do have dedicated tables for miniature and board games there so oh, so well, yeah so there you go and that's for people who don't understand why it's pay to play for all these places is that um retail makes and you know we've talked earlier about stores failing all the time so the the, the challenging with retail thing is you have to make a certain amount of money per square foot yep and if you don't you go out of business it's just that simple because of, of rent so what most retailers figure out is how much money they make per square foot, and that's usually justified by the amount of stock per square foot and what kind of things sell. And if things don't move fast enough, they, they change the stock and rearrange the store, blah, blah, blah. Well, if you're going to have huge sections of your store that are basically going to be tables, right? Which uh, is dead space. For people to play at, then in a restaurant that works because everybody sitting at a table is ordering food and paying money, so you're still making money per square foot. But in a gaming store, unless those people sitting down are paying something to be there – uh, either through food or, you know, usage or both, um, you're going to be in trouble pretty quick. So you do, if you're going to dedicate that much space, you really have to figure out a way to, uh, to get some revenue from it. And so that's why you got to have the pay to play. I mean, if you yep. want air conditioning and, and lights, you got to pay for it. I think too, the reason why you need to have the pay to play is there's, to me, it's total opinion. There's the two types of gamers and this is nothing to do with economic class at all. There's the one gamer that tries to get her gaming or his gaming hobby in as frugally as they can, you know? Um, and then there's the other gamey gamer hobbyist that's like Karelian cruiser, $200 space rocks dot net. No problem. Like I need to have that right now. And, and so I think it's hard, you know, the stores can't exist on the, on the second half of that gamer. Cause there's sometimes the super frugal gamer who's like, eh, you know, I'll play for free as long as I can and not buy one thing. I'll eat my peanut butter and jelly sandwich in the car, you know? Yes. Right. Um, so, yes, to your point, Craig, I think there's some of this happening locally, too, and I'm looking forward to seeing if uh, more of it more of it happen. Um, and we've sort of stumbled into it in a sort of a weird way in our local gaming group. Right. Um, and that's – and so yeah. So we, what we have now, we – there's absolutely no gaming infrastructure whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, there's lots of food and drink available and space. So – it's not really a gamer cafe that we have, but it's almost like a, a, a wandering gamer cafe where we bring in our own games. Uh, and then there are some challenges. So uh, as we've said, and we've actually mentioned uh, many times over the past couple of months in, uh, in Achievements in Gaming, our gaming group uh, or what's, you know, what, what's left of it or what it's grown into uh, has changed venues again. And uh, we are now at a bar and grill called Millie's Tavern. Mm -hmm. And Millie's Tavern in the back has a dedicated – it's sort of a function room. Yeah, function room with a bar, which is the best part. Yeah, it's a function room with a a full bar. Yes. And uh, and as long as we have enough gamers showing up Mm -hmm. and spending money on the food and the drink – the establishment actually stocks the bar or staffs the bar with a full time with a with a bartender that's there the whole time and she's awesome and she knows this all by name and it's like mm-hmm. walking into cheers and i seriously until recently when i'm trying to change some of my habits i would walk in and nadia would slide a diet coke in my direct actually it's pepsi that's the only weakness of the whole thing but anyway <laughs> uh, she would slide it towards me as i was walking in and that so that's that right that right there is worth the price of admission which is zero so so that's where we are now now now, Rafe, I sense that this is where we can bring it all home. And what, what, like, where, what are your thoughts? I have mixed feelings okay. about it. Um, Nadia is great, no doubt about that. The I don't know. It, I, as Russ says sometimes, it's mixing my peanut butter with my chocolate. 
Uh-huh. And in that, I mean, I love, I love eating out with my friends. And so the, the fact, and the food there is pretty good, I think. Um, the only disappointing food I have is the pizza. Everything else has been great. So that's cool. What I don't like about it is the tables aren't meant for gamers. They're bar tables. So they're mismatched. They're wobbly. You have the, those wooden chairs. They're in, in my way constantly. Yeah. Um, the lighting is horrible. I don't know if it's because I'm really getting to be, you know, sort of grampy here, but I cannot see a flipping thing in that place. And again, why should it be? It's lit for a bar. So I'm just not enjoying it. Um, uh, that aspect of it, it, it is making me just, I'm like, well, you know, let's just go to Myriad Games. I mean, Myriad Games is set up for gamers and I never complained uh, about my method of Myriad Games was show up around four. I have that luxury of being self-employed, fart around, there's the early birds that are there, go get something to eat with my friends. I didn't care if it took 90 minutes. That's just me. A lot of gamers hated that. Andy hated that it took 90 minutes. We'd go to La Carreta, we'd have a margarita, we'd eat good fajitas, we'd come back, we'd play a game. And, and Myriad used to stay out late for us. My only critique with Myriad was it was small because of that whole retail square footage issue. And with Russ and Craig in the same room, it gets freaking loud. Hey, hey, and, hey. Uh, <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> yeah, Craig, the theater guy, can project from here to Kansas, folks. Let me tell you, um, a lot of st- hours of training. Yes, yeah, so, and not get exhausted. Um, no, but seriously, the the sound in there would just get just get. Oh, and the and the the space. Like one of the things I loved about Daka Daka, and this was Russ and John's original idea, was. They didn't like being butt to butt, being a miniature gamer. So they specifically had the tables with enough space to walk around your miniature table without having to move your gear or the other person. And Myriad also didn't have that. So it wasn't, Myriad wasn't perfect. Um, but it was lit right and the table heights were right and things like that. So that's my, oh, and then the most recent beef is because it's a bar, it's happened to me at least on three occasions. I walk in. I got all my gear. Oh, hey, it's some other business function. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah, this is a gamer case. Leave me alone. And then we go to the middle room, which just isn't set up for you know gaming because of the bar and the band and stuff like that. So that's my beef. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think those are all valid. And I, I was one of those people that supports pay to play. Um, I, I view Daka Daka. Russ used Bowling Alley. I think he was being, uh, he was cheapening himself. I viewed it as a golf clubs pro area. It was for the members, and you paid, and there was an area for you to be as a member. And it was clean, and it was you know swept up, and, and you could order Cesario's pizza, and there was a place to eat it, and Craig could paint and be rude to, not rude, but uh, not want to be friends with Dave. And, oh, you know, for the love of God. <laughs> that's where that all started. And, uh, yeah. So that started I, in the original DACA location. That's where yeah. that infamous episode occurred. Oh, is that where that occurred? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I was always a fan of the pay-to-play model, just like a members-only golf club. Yep. I myself don't enjoy pay-to-play because I've only got a set budget, and I would rather spend it on gaming, uh, on the actual games themselves. Hmm? But uh, in this particular um, crowd of three, I'm outnumbered, and I know that. <laughs> well, I I like – so the Millie's thing, and we should say it's Millie's Tavern. They're, I think, Craig, you mentioned it there. Yeah. They've been very accommodating, and this worked out really yep. well. And you can probably do this in your own neighborhood. Um, this is not the first time we've tried this. So yeah. we had a period of time where um, uh, DACA went away, and mostly because yeah. my family grew. So I had kids. My brother had kids. We decided it was time to move on from being self-employed. Um, and um, there was a So today's of- tax day, Russ, on extension. And yes. boy, are you glad you moved away because yes. <laughs> I'm ready to go to Montana with a rifle. There you go. I'm telling you, right? <laughs> Um, so, so <laughs> that's another lost. Wait chapter. a minute. Is Canada terrorist? Take me. Where, where are you? I'm moving. <laughs> oh, you don't want to oh, go yeah, there. Canada. That would be, a, uh, if for this particular reason, that's probably yeah, not a good not choice. Oh, that's up. worse. Craig, where you're do not, I need to go? Up. Uh, you want to go to uh, Grand Cayman is my understanding. Grand Cayman. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, not that Maybe I researched Navin. it. Maybe Navin. Navin, you still listening? Uh, not that I researched Hit me a little. But law practice in Sri Lanka. So we tried this before. And, and the way you can do this is that a lot of restaurants do have a function room. And used to be Cafe 324, ironically, not very far away from Millie's, actually. That's true. <laughs> um, Same and, parking lot. Yeah, right. And they had also – so a lot of restaurants have these function rooms. And if they're not being rented, they're sitting there dormant, 
not making any money, just being quietly underutilized. And so mm-hmm. uh, Dave Farr, the nerd herder there, went and talked to these guys at Millie's and said, hey, I think Adam might have been involved, too. I'm not sure who was involved in the initial part. Yeah, Adam did it first for a one-off yeah. event of one and, of his Malifaux and tournaments. And said, hey, if we can get, you know, yeah. 10, 15, 20 guys in here um, on a Tuesday and they and they buy, you know, a few drinks and some apps or maybe an entree or two, what do you guys think? And they're like, well, let's try it and see what we make. And so it was kind of like a catch as catch can and and – now we've been posting in what's the community they they use they're leveraging. Uh, they they use a, a board a game meetup a meetup meetups yeah meetups yeah. Uh, come and that's been really growing the group and the group's actually grown yes. if anything considerably. Since, well, it's since actually we melded into at least two other which, groups, and which so. has always been my concern about moving away from the game store. Because one of the things I like about playing in game stores is I'm one of the the wacky people who actually likes to have new gamers constantly coming in, new blood constantly coming in. Because I was afraid that. For whatever reason, even like myself, or like Rafe talked about the summer not having time, and I, I, I'm currently having under being able to not game as much as I'd like. And so when people get pulled out, if the, if the community is too small, it'll fall apart. So what I like about having it big is that I know it'll be there when I can come back. Cause just like Rafe, I'll eventually free up again and I'll be ready to go back and game. And I'm, I hope my community's still there. So, so that idea of, of using the internet to get people to come has been great. Millie's has been very accommodating. What's great about it growing is that I think we are making some pretty, you know, I don't know if they're, you know, you know, rolling the dough there, but I think they're making some nice money on the nights they wouldn't be using the room. The tricky bit is that when someone does rent out that room from time to time on a Tuesday evening, cause they're paying lots of money, um, Millie's kindly says, well, we're sorry. You can't use it tonight. I've got, you know, someone else coming in here, but they don't which just is totally us. understandable. What's cool is they don't kick us out though. They say, Hey, you welcome to use the pool room. And they bring out some cool pieces of wood and put it on top of the pool tables, cover it over. And actually, that's a better place to game because the pool tables are bigger and there's nice lights right above them. And you yeah. can actually have a nice size surface that's about roughly four by six, which is perfect for a miniature game or something like that. So um, that is actually really cool. And it never actually kicked us out. The thing that is a little awkward about it is that the nice thing about playing in a gaming store or a gaming cafe is that I think, Ray, if you were hinting at this, the moment you walk in there, it's like it's your people, right? So you walk into a gaming store and it's just about gaming. So if I walk into a gaming store with my giant battle phone bag or my right. big, you know, hands, Star Wars hands full of Star Wars mats or, or a bunch of board games, it's like, hey, you're even if people I don't know, it's like, oh my God, you got that cool game. Let's talk about how do you like it? What do you do? And I'm immediately just chillaxing. Even if they're ahead of my friends, I'm talking to people that, you know, are into my same yeah. stuff. Right. If I walk into the bar like that, and, you know, my friends aren't there yet or gamers aren't there yet. Now it's like, it's just a little weird, you know, and it's not a big deal, you know, but, you know, I became long enough not to, to talk my way out of it. But it's just like, yeah, that awkward situation, um, which you just, I don't, on Tuesdays, I don't want to deal with that awkward situation, you know. So it's kind of like, that's the only thing a little weird about it. Um, and again, you're not always, there's always that element of, is it going to be booked this night, you know. Um, but so far, it's been working great. Uh, and, um, but the downside of it is because we've, we've left Myriad and, and we, we did move on from Myriad because they, their, their stock levels were dropping and they and they were shifting around. But because we left not going there religiously, of course they cut their hours back on Tuesday because yeah. why would they want to spend that money with nobody coming? So they cut their hours back. So now, uh, it is what it is, right? So, right. right. Um, yeah. you know, it's we made kinda, our own it bed. It's like accidentally evolved. Yeah. We made our own situation. bed. So, so it is what it is and we can't really complain about it, but, um, so but you know, it's, I'm actually really enjoying it. I do love being able to sit down and that, um, you know, they, they know who we are. They know our regular orders. Yeah. You know, I can have a drink. I can have, um, some nice buffalo wings Ross or whatever. has been drinking a lot more than he used to. I'll say that. Uh, There's yeah. been a lot more margaritas. Ever He's since, new Russ. Ever since I went to Hawaii with the family, we got into frou-frou drinks and now I drink all the oh. frou-frou drinks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Bl- blame the family. I also He's got into Russ. beer in Germany, but unfortunately, the problem with getting into beer in Germany is when you come back to the States, it's it's not, not really the same beer. It's it's not really what I would call good beer, unfortunately. Well, I, I mean, know I don't want to offend go, a bunch of Americans, I know I just did, but I'm telling you. If you go from Germany and start drinking Coors Light, no offense no, to Coors, but No, you know. there's I have not I've yet to find it. So you just you try to find it for me, Rafe. I'll I'll, I'll try it. <laughs> well but it I'm depends on what you. kind you like, but whatever. Um it has I think it has to be made in Germany. So <laughs> anyway. So but anyway, but, but I really like um so I, I don't know. I'm kind of like with Rafe. I think I really like it. Um, and I'm just getting used to it. But when it's working, it's great. I, but it is, you know, the tables are wobbly. They're not all the same height. The lighting's not ideal. Um, but at the same time, um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think I could get into it. But I see what you're, I see the appeal though. So if there was a big enough, strong enough gaming community and someone could launch one of these 
sort of bar restaurant things that really appeal to gamers and, and just had, you know, almost, I mean, Millie's doesn't have a library at all. Nope. But I, but the problem I would see with it is I know we could pack it one night a week. Right. Right. I don't know if we could pack it every night of the week. Right. That's why. And so how does a business run a restaurant? Yeah. How does a business run when they only get one or two days a week? I mean, Doc and Doc had the same sort of cadence where Saturdays were always huge and Tuesdays were always big. And then you had trickle rest of the week. You know, as long as you had a really big Saturday and a really big Tuesday, you were fine. But, you know, you can't, it's hard to drive a business when you only have, when not every day is high traffic. Right. Um, so I don't know, short of a city, you know, like something in downtown New York or downtown Boston, I don't know if you can drive enough traffic to really keep something like that that's purely gaming related. Agreed. You know, but if that's to your point, Rafe, if you had a, if you did cater that way, but then also happen to have a kick ass, chef yep. and, and a good menu and a great food place that just happened to be sort of geeky themed and happened to have a cool room in the back that wasn't designed necessarily for general functions, but more for gaming that's, functions. That's that what I'm envisioning. might succeed. Yeah. And now's the time to make a restaurant like that because with, uh, what's the nerd show that I don't watch that's super successful. The girl with the high, the Big guy bang, with the high Big voice. Bang Theory? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, with the success of that, with the success of Game of Thrones, with the success of Walking Dead sort of hitting, quote, mainstream populace, you know, not those of us that have been nerds for 20 years. So, you know, with that, they'll go into and say, oh, cool, you know, and, and see the, you know, the Game of Thrones type of arc, you know, art on the wall and they'll, they'll eat their Caesar salad there. So that's how I'm envisioning it. Oh, yeah, I can see that. And, by the way, it has iPads or some of those things that like are on the swivel thing, mm-hmm. and you either work synergistically with your local game store. So Russ is there. He's like, oh, my God, I got to get the new Carillion Cruiser. Boop, 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 right on the iPad, and it's either local gaming store. It'll be there for him. He can pick it up, or it's, you know, internet wholesaler, and boop, shipped, done. I think you put it on Amazon.com and get the commission. <laughs> get yep. the little, yep. But you only make like pennies in a dollar. Yeah, there, or still. that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's pretty, um, I don't know. I, I would love to see someone try that. I would, I would try to support it. I mean, like flying sauce and pizza is sort of that if they had a function room, they'd be it. Um, yeah. so yeah, I, I'd love to see someone do that. Rafe, make it so. I'm gonna. With your million dollars. You've got to make your millions and then yeah, you've got to make your do millions right, of rocket dog reports and, and then, then go you know, be a restaurant tour. All right. Sounds good. There you go. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, is that, I think that's, you know, they're starting to close us down here, Granger. I see. Yeah, well, no, I, you know what would be great is if they let us play games and Dunkin' Donuts. I know. Wouldn't that be great? What about? I feel like, I, did we get Craig's opinion? We got Russ's opinion and Rafe's opinion, but did we um, get I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. The lights, um, I the feel I, the lights are bad and there's no denying that. Uh, Brian Ahern did a very intriguing oh, thing and brought his brilliant. own light. Yes. Yes. Which I think Russ ordered one I with did. his phone at the table while yeah. we it's were playing a, a game. It's a USB powered light yep. that, that has a battery in it. So when it's unplugged, it still can run for like four hours. So it's great. <laughs> yeah. I got to get that. Uh, yeah. yep. So the lighting is an issue for me. Um, I, 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 I don't like when we get kicked out because we didn't mention there's a live band every Tuesday night. Yes. So when we get kicked out of the function room with, with that door closed, we're far enough away. The, 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 you know, you can tell if it's a good band or a bad band, but it's mm. not overpowering. But right. when you're in the pool room, it's like, you've got to speak up. You don't have to shout to be heard, but you've got to speak loudly in order to be heard over the band. And the band quality varies wildly from one Tuesday to the next. Um, but I mean, the people are great. They're really, really nice. They try to do everything for us. Um, and the people I mean, are they're super le- nice. The, 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 they're letting us use this space for nothing, basically. Well, which is- we're doing what Russ said. We're packing that place on a Tuesday night. Exactly. But, but there are people who pack that place on a Tuesday night for an event and they have to pay $150. But we're regular. I understand that, and I'm just I'm just saying. No, you're that right. They, we're not they, paying extra. We're we're just paying for the food. Exactly. And, and it's you very nice up. of them to here's allow the, us. To, yes, it makes sense. Yeah, but here's the because problem: because they're making more money than they would if it was so, empty. So the problem, Rafe, is that 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 um, the gamer who is frugal can walk in and play and not buy anything and leave. Right. And that venue is available to him or her because others are buying food. And the Correct. problem is if the others who are buying food start to become frugal also, then that will stop. 
right? Oh, yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. very, Not, it's this very is a, We're currently informal. in a fluid. If yeah. everybody was like, hey, we're going to all pitch in 150 every week, you know, then it's or a we're regular all, thing. I, mean, I make sure I order my food there because I want to. I, feel, I would feel guilty. I ate. Well, but and I tip very well. And I yes. hope all the other gamers that are going there are tipping very yes. well also we, with that understanding of, wow, I would be somewhere else spending more money on food because the food is re- really well priced. Yep. I was going to say. And the, the service thing. is crazy. You have – Nadia comes to your gaming tables with right. refills, refills when she sees soda. it's going yeah, it's down. Awesome. It's insane. Well, Nadia is awesome and she's smart because, you know, then she can make some nice tips. And I'm not saying she's doing it for that reason. She's, well, I don't know. Really, Gamers, you know, they're like the, any community. Some are good tippers. Yeah. Some are not great tippers. But I think the other thing that Millie's is doing right is that the food is very well priced. Like you, well, yeah. I think it's half price apps for a certain period yes, of time. Yep. I yeah. mean, that speaks right to a gamer. So it's not like you're paying uh, $18.99 for six wings. I mean, you're paying like super reasonable also, prices. We're so. also picking a good night because Tuesdays are not a traditionally strong night for restaurants. Right. So they're happy exactly. to have us at that time anyway. Um, so Rafe, when you open your... Uh, your, your, when you make your million and you open your, your store, I think you need to get a tagline like this. So I'm reading the, right. I happen to be on the Flying Saucer Peaks Company website and the, the review from the Boston Globe is Funky Hipster Chic by way of the USS Enterprise. There you so, go. So well, that lose me on hipster. That's though, what you, so. I, I don't, wouldn't call them hipsters either. I don't know yeah. what they, but, but I would call it, you want to be Funky Hipster Chic by way of the 41st Millennium. Mm-hmm. That's, there, there that's what you want to go for. That's pretty good. I like it. <laughs> or, or by way of the Iron Kingdoms. Or the Iron Kingdoms for you, for or, you. Or uh, Star Wars, you know, by yeah. by way uh, of the Rebel Alliance, galaxy far, far away. Um, Ooh, by the by way of a gar- galaxy far, far away. See, there Ooh, you go. that's good. I, 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 there you have it. There it is, Granger. So light, start that up, and, and I, then what, Disney I, comes down. And on I your need head. I need one percent for that good idea. For sure, you, you got it. Done. Cool. There you go. Sold. All right. Well, now we do have to go because Dunks is kicking us out, and they do not yeah. have good lighting, good tables, or the ability to play games here, which is really they do hard. not. Uh, all right. Well, maybe thank you. after today they will. But. And, Thank you for joining us, Rafe, and we'll see you yeah, on the big show here in about a week. Yeah, and uh, hey, hey, just wrap up all those personal problems you've got, okay? And yeah, hold yeah. on to them. And yeah. when we get yeah. to the main show, we'll uh, we'll deal with some more. Right, we'll get it's you on the couch. It's become clear to me I need new friends. <laughs> uh, <okay>. <laughs> <laughs> that became clear to me a while ago. Uh, was, all I right. Have, I could have told you that 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now you tell me. Thanks for purchasing a D6G Lost Chapter. Supporting the show helps it grow.